Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the show at Wise Up Rise Up Show with me, your host, the Queen Bee, Danny Wong. How are you feeling? As we chat this morning to the devilishly handsome, the fabulously wonderful, the incredibly knowledgeable Mr. Fidel Bow Hill, the modern man. Good morning. Jody Soul, good morning. Babna Reddy, good morning. Elise Woodfire, good morning. Devilishly handsome Ian Dixon. Good morning, sir. Shut up for f- <laughs> sake, Jesus. The fantastic Lizzie Jackson Barrett. Good morning. Good morning. Josephine Sandra. Everybody. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, you lot. Get on in here. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Is it Thursday? So, James, is it Thursday? She's nodding. Yeah, it's Thursday. Thank God for that. I thought, flipping heck, was it Wednesday? No, because I wish I remember wishing you a happy hump day yesterday as a signed off. Good morning, everybody. Whilst I had a little brain fart there, I hope you are all well. Welcome to the show, Wise Up Rise Up Show with me, host Sally Wallace. I am the Queen Bee, as are you, or the King Bee or the Sovereign Bee, however it is you identify, you are most welcome. I hope you are feeling good this morning. Uh, I am. I feel the proper good. I put my face on this morning. I feel very proud of myself. Like I, ooh, I've got the, I've got a pop of lip colour going on. I've got some highlight going on this morning. I'm like, put my wall paint on this morning. I don't know why. Um, well, I do know why, because I don't know about you, but when I when I put my makeup on, I always feel like a little bit like extra charge. And this week is definitely requiring some extra charge because um, in the IATQB Hive this week, we are on now, we're just moving into day three of the Be Heard, See, Want to Be a Speak Challenge. Uh, and it is popping off. It is going crackers in there. And I am loving it. I am love, 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 loving it. Um, there are so many of you in there at the moment uh, doing the tasks, showing up for yourselves, doing the learning, allowing yourself to sort of put the spotlight on those bits of yourself that you might feel a little bit uncomfortable with. And it's brilliant. Yeah, Govinda, right? It, it's, it's not called war paint for no reason. Like I have, and I've got something to tell you about, about a tattoo in a minute. But look, so this is my make, so you all know I absolutely adore makeup, right? It's my, if, if everything falls through, I'll just go be a makeup artist and be happy about it um but this is my war paint tattoo there's some mascara and a compact and some lipstick up here um uh, but yeah i am i am a fan and i'm here and i got my war paint on this morning i feel like i feel like i'm leading a whole army into battle this week um to become more visible to speak about their businesses to give value around their businesses without that being draining it's just been wicked it's been so so good who's watching this morning amy blaney in the house good morning my angel jojo smith hello good morning my sister um Amy, 20% are allowed. Yeah, so this is the common statistic around uh, things like challenges, courses, and what have you. The only 20% of people that sign up actually complete. And this is the same for things like online courses as well. I always challenge people that come and work with me that, you know, just because you've crossed a coach or a mentor's palm with silver is not going to make you do the work. What that coach or mentor is going to do is they're going to hold space for you. They're going to assist you with additional pieces of knowledge. But what they're not going to do is do the actual work for you. And what is beautiful this week is seeing so many of you show up for yourselves and not just go, oh, I've signed up for the challenge and hmm, that challenge were a bit shit probably because you didn't get involved with it, probably because you saw something that made you feel uncomfortable and then you retreated a little bit. And we talk about self-sabotage all the time as part of the show. We talk about all sorts of stuff. But what has been phenomenal this week is just how many. I really strongly believe that we're going to have the most amount of finishers in this particular run of, of challenge. Um, I think we are going to have more people over the line than ever before. And what's beautiful as well is that everybody that's taking part isn't leaving anybody behind. So when people are posting their challenges, when people are posting their tasks, other members of the group are getting in there and they're getting on there and not just saying, 
thumbs up or liking it that they're getting on and they're providing support so the support that's going on in there at the minute is brilliant everybody's lifting each other up we're all fired up and i'm so excited for anybody that isn't challenging at the minute tomorrow night at 8 p.m you can still come and get involved we're having a huge celebration live we're going to get on i'm going to be talking about charisma tomorrow night. i'm going to do a master class in charisma <laughs> so if you want to be uh, adding a little sprinkle of the X factor to anything that you're doing, I'm going to be talking to you about very specific things that you can do because charisma is not a lucky thing. Charisma isn't something that is given to you by fate. Actually, it's a skill. Um, people say, oh, you were born with natural charisma. Well, yeah, some people are, but also you can learn it. So tomorrow night at 8 p.m., I'm not only going to provide y'all with the premiere, the world premiere of the new IATQB promo, which I am so excited. Look, I feel like a dog, you know, when a dog's dead happy and it just wags its bum and it can't help it. That's how I feel right now. Just wagging my bum because I'm dead happy. <laughs> 8 p.m. tomorrow, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you on the Queen Bee Danny page on Facebook and in the Hive the um, the world premiere of the IATQB brand new video promo. So I'm so excited to share that with you. Also going to be doing a little masterclass around charisma. And the doors will fly open to the Be Heard You Want to Be a Speaker program and also the Be Heard Mastermind. So, yeah, big things happening this week. It feels incredible. The energy is absolutely turned up in there and it's beautiful. But speaking of tattoos, just telling you about tattoos. Uh, a member of the Hive, a close friend of mine and one of my tattoo artists, and when I say my tattoo artist, it's not like I have that kind of entourage, y'all. Like, I didn't suddenly become Danny Wallace and all of and I have an in-house tattoo artist, but I have preferred artists. Uh, and Lou uh, Lou Nixon of the Woodland Realm here in Preston, just at Bamber Bridge, is one of them. So she owns this arm. So <laughs> all of the art that you see on this arm, actually Lou's done. They've got the heart one that's up here as well. She also did my original Queen Bee, I can't twist my arm, it's that way around, but I can't show it you that way. The Queen Bee tattoo, and it's got some daisies and poppy and ivy around it. So she's done all of that, but... But this evening is going to be a bit different. And it really ties in nicely with our beautiful guest this morning. We've got the gorgeous Sarah Jane Lewis talking to us about uh, connection, about healing, about spirituality within the mindset space um, and within the mental health space. Um, tonight, the work that Lou does is phenomenal. So not only is she a phenomenal artist and she has a great shop, you go there, you, have, you know, it's a, a lovely experience when you go. She is her business sits really within the spiritual realm. Her her shop, her tattoo parlor is called the Woodland Realm. And you go in there and there's like crystals everywhere. You can go buy loads of crystals and incense and loads of witchy type stuff. And it's just beautiful. There's little oracle cards that are in there that you can go and check out as well as go and getting your ink done. Um, and she is doing an experience for me this evening that I cannot wait to report back on. I don't know what tattoo I'm getting tonight. I have no idea. It has not been preordained by me or by Lou. So we're she's gonna so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go into, into the studio this evening. We're already very connected in terms of like, you know, we've worked with each other. She's inked me before. And I always feel like with a tattoo artist, a really great tattoo artist, I always feel like I'm carrying a little bit of their art with me. Um, so we're already connected, we're already drawn to each other that way. Um and so she's going to sage the room. She's going to clear all the energies in the room. She's going to get all the room all nice and like energy-tastic. And then she's going to do some Reiki. And then we're going to do a meditation. She's going to facilitate a meditation where, and here, like I told you, I'm here for any of it, all of it and any of it. So those of you that are like woo adjacent or those of you that are like not here for the woo, just cover your ears for a second. Um, so she's going to do a meditation and she's going to connect to spirit and well, beforehand, we're going to talk about what I want the tattoo to represent. So FYI, and I'll show you this tomorrow, I want the tattoo to represent abundance and community. That's what I want it to represent, because those are the two things that really mean the world to me. Community, because you can't raise a child without a village, and you can't raise a business without a village, right? You can't raise a life without, because we, you, we still need villages, even when we are grown. We don't just need it to raise a child, we need it to raise ourselves, right? So community and abundance, because I've 
believe it's our birthright to abundance. So there's the two things that I want this tattoo to represent. She's going to lead a meditation. She's going to then connect to spirit. I don't know how that happens, but she's got, that's what she's going to do. And I'm just going to be totally open and, and keep my heart open to it all. And then she's, Gabriella's like this, don't listen, babes, just keep your ears shut for this bit. Um, and then she's going to design something that she feels drawn to, to represent that. And then she's going to put it on my body. I don't know where uh, I've got, where I've got spare, where I've got space. Uh, <laughs> I've got a space up here and I've got a space on my thigh. So I think like one of those two places. Uh, so we'll play pants roulette tomorrow. If I have a tattoo on my thigh tomorrow, I'll just wear some shorts so I can show you my tattoo. Um, so yeah, I am so excited about that experience. I cannot wait to report back what comes from that. I can't wait to show you what she creates. She's a really talented artist. Um, and I know she's really super connected, not only to herself, but to the world around her. So yeah, excited. Uh, I will I will report back forthwith. Uh, but that's it at Harper's Five today. Um, I've been checking her Facebook page. I feel a trip away being planned so I can get me some of that. Yeah, do. It's the Woodland Realm at Bamber Bridge in Preston. It's Lou Nixon. She's brilliant. Um, okay, enough. I've talked a lot. I'm so sorry. Sarah Jane's back there. She's like nodding along and she's here. It's like, get in this conversation. We are talking to the phenomenal Sarah Jane Lewis this morning. We're going to be talking about all things healing from a mental health point of view and how do we connect that into a spiritual and energetic place. All right, you lot. Give her a round of applause. I want to see the clapping emoji or the heart emoji or click the heart button and the love button and like button as we welcome to the show at Wise Up Rise Up Show this morning, the glorious Sarah J. Lewis. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, every time I bring somebody onto the show, it just gives me life because one of the one of the loves of my life is this show and the fact that I get to share the platform with so many incredible people, yourself included, is just such a joy. So thank you for joining me. Good morning. No, thank you. Thank you. When I got the email yesterday, I was like, is this real? A message is like, oh, a little bit sad, <laughs> but no, it's good. And I said to you, I mean, I've been following you for a little while now and read your book and the things that you do. And yeah, huge inspiration to me. So thank you for having me on the show. Ah, oh, the way that the way that the show works, I was just explaining to you in the backstage area in the green room. Um, I had to apologize for the lack of snacks that we've got back there at the moment. I'm really sorry. One day, it's my intention, so I will put this out there to the universe, is that we have a studio downstairs and that we book people to come into the studio and we make it a whole thing. Um, but at the moment, there are no snacks in the green room. But in the green room, we were just saying, do you know when you just like the cut of someone's jib when you're on a night out and you end up, you know, you come across each other in the toilets and all of a sudden you're just mates for, for no other reason than you go, do you know what? Oh, your hair looks really nice. Or, oh, that's a really bonny dress you've got on. And you end up talking in there for hours. And that's what it feels like this conversation is going to be today. It is, it is. I can do that in the queue in Morrison's. I can do that at the post office. I went climbing last night and I just feel the urge to talk to people. And I'm sure people must think I'm a bit weird, but I just love talking to people and I, I can just... You know when you sense somebody just needs a chat? Yeah. I just do it. I open it up and just chat to anybody. So, yeah, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Sarah Jane, tell us um, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. Yes. So, um, I'm a holistic energy uh, practitioner. So, I help women end the cycle of stress and anxiety through going through a transformational journey with energy to release blockages around emotional health, uh, mental health, physical health and spiritual health using uh, kind of four fun fundamentals. So movement, uh, nutrition, relaxation, and connection. So connection with your inner self, and like you said, community in a tribe. Yeah, absolutely. And the interesting thing is that if we talk about mental health specifically, and when and when we do talk about mental health on the show, there has to be the caveat that if you are struggling with your mental health, mm. please do go and see a medical healthcare practitioner in the first instance. What we talk about with regards to uh, assistive and holistic techniques is that that's what it is. They are alternative and complementary therapies that allow you to navigate that. Sometimes I would argue in a way that is a, a, a little um, mm, a, a, mm, better. <laughs> I just say it. Yeah, than, um, you have to be careful the big you, pharma. you do have to be you very do, careful. You do. But it's the one thing that's actually helped me because I've been in that route. I've, I've been on antidepressants. I've been in bed, not wanting to get out. Mm -hmm. Uh, not doing anything for the day, not washing, just not wanting to face the world. And 
being on antidepressants kind of put a plaster over it didn't yeah. actually make anything better it numbed it I could yeah. function which mm -hmm. I guess for a lot of people that helps but it doesn't yeah. get down to the root cause of why do you feel like this why yeah. why are you repeating the same patterns why are you having the same relationships why are you having those same thoughts again and again and it doesn't lift you out of that it just makes it a little bit rosier for the moment in time makes it palatable in the moment isn't it it stops the highs being so high and the lows yeah. being so low and it kind of can meet you in the middle which sometimes provides beautiful respite if you've yeah. been on the roller coaster of suffering with your mental health and something i make absolutely no secret of at all in my life is something that i um i i work with as opposed to battle I, I, I kind of put my put my weapons down a long time ago trying to fight it because that was exhausting but knowing myself and these things that you were talking about connection to self connection to community um things like nutrition understanding that what i'm ingesting is having a direct impact on my energy um and my anxiety um, and yeah. you know turning to turning to drink sometimes to mask how it is that I'm feeling or celebrating a day of the week with a Y in it would have a direct impact. I think on, we did that in lockdown, didn't we? Right, right. <laughs> had a direct impact on my anxiety levels, you know, and it, and it is, it's, it's very much swings, swings and roundabouts where that's concerned. But when you start to look, like say, as a whole, mm -hmm. there are definitely things that we can do. And these cycles are... Re the more that I look into this, and I had a chapter on this in my book about being a cycle breaker, that it isn't just your own cycle. Sometimes these are generational as well, aren't they? Completely and utterly. And I didn't realise that. A lot of the work that I've been looking into and the more and more I kind of work with people is that this can be passed on when you're in the womb from just the environment you're in when you're growing up. Children pick up so much when they're wee, when they're little, yeah. And we think, oh, they're not listening. They're not. They're not partaking. But they absorb everything. And kind of your values and your belief systems and your foundations for life are really set in those early ages. So if you're in quite a traumatic environment, or it's not particularly happy, or it's very anxious all the time, then you're going to kind of carry that on because it's almost inbuilt, but you don't realise it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so with that in mind you work on a number of different principles just talk us through again what those principles are and, and how those fit together with with un, I say unblocking energy but people, people find it a bit difficult to understand like with energy blockages and what that means maybe we should start there what yeah. we're talking about with like energy what does energy so blockage mean we are all made of energy Right. I mean, when you have you ever given somebody a hug and you feel it, you feel it inside you or you walk into a room and there's just a vibe. There's just a low energy, like a low. You can sense it, can't you? Like there's been an argument or the mood's not so great. And that's energy. We're all made of energy and we can uh, control that energy to a certain extent. But a lot of us are kind of just functioning life, just kind of sleepwalking a little bit, not realizing that how much exercise we do or just movement in general, the food that we put in our body, like higher quality food will just improve that energy yeah. and can make instant differences to your mood, to how you feel, to kind of your anxiety levels. So as humans, we we connect, we're, we're all connected to some extent. Um, when you think of somebody, what's the chances that you then get a message from them? Or you mm. think, oh, I need to phone somebody and then the phone rings. So we've all got this kind of, interconnection and is that that's very woo but very um how do i put it it's, it's difficult without sounding too woo but <clears throat> we are connected all together and the more that time you spend with people the more close that you are emotionally with people it becomes mm. stronger so when it comes to kind of uh life and experiences and and maybe if you're in a place where you're unhappy it could be due to um, kind of instances throughout your life that have just um, got stuck in your body kind of energetically yeah. and you're just reliving those patterns subconsciously. Mm. Does that make sense? It does, <laughs> yeah. I, do you know what? I can't remember where I read it, but I read it literally this morning. Where did I read it? I can't remember to credit it. But there was something along the lines of we – trauma, however trauma looks. So mm -hmm. trauma is completely – personalized and individual so for somebody trauma could be tripping up over at school and having everybody laugh at them trauma yeah. could be you know 
being you know exposed to abuse it could be anything it's, it's a something that happens that you don't expect that you have to react to that might have a negative outcome so yeah. that is kind of how it is but we often hold those traumas in our bodies and in our minds and we don't know how to let go of them and when you hold on to them like that there is you're taking up space that could be taken up with something else and something more positive and something that will be able to, you know, create abundance or, you know, happiness or peace in your life. Definitely. I'm assuming then that the work that you do allows you to start not maybe unpicking that, but understanding that that's what you're holding on to and start to release. And that's part of the healing process, isn't it? Yes. So it's to work with people to understand kind of what are those triggers and to look at them and think, right, actually see that trigger, see that moment in your time that made you feel bad and go, actually, it's not who I am. It's not who I am fundamentally and just Mm -hmm. letting it go. And you can simply just say, delete. I don't want to think like that. Delete or imagine that emotion or imagine that experience in a bubble and just let it go. I think Mm -hmm. the best analogy that I've heard of it kind of to explain experiences in our life. So imagine you're in a bathtub full of water. Yeah. You're in the bath. You yourself yourself is your essence, kind of your your higher self as such. And the water Mm -hmm. around you is your life, your experiences. And the bathtub is your outer shell, your outer being. Yeah. And in the bathtub, there's lots of bugs, lots of flies. And every now and again, they come up and bite you. And you think, ow, that's not nice. <laughs> and that's like something that happened when you're a kid or <clears throat> that bad relationship. And they come and bite you and you go out and you, people ignore those bugs. <clears throat> they flick them away and then they come back and bite you and you keep right. re-experiencing that bad experience. But what you need to do in those times is go, actually, what does this relate to? What does this, why is this bug biting me? Oh, it's such and such. Pick it up and always just let it go. Release it. Mm-hmm. so and then you just clear that energy field clear your uh kind of what you said your your essence so you can move forward a lot freer and not expending energy on those negative thoughts and negative um kind of experiences yeah so when we talk about releasing I think releasing is a really it's a hard concept I think when you're new to it to understand yeah. how to do like i uh, many people including myself for many years I sat within my past and my victimhood so I was very much like yeah. these things happen to me That's and this I is am. why I am the way I am yeah? Yeah. yeah and how many times do we hear I am who I am I just can't change All and the time. that is that is a prime symptom I guess and a, a, a classic symptom of somebody who's holding on to something when you're just saying I am who I am part of the healing process is to maybe understand that our physical beings which includes our emotions which includes like the chemicals in our brain all of that's quite transient isn't it it is it is you aren't those things <clears throat> they happen to you granted mm-hmm. and yeah. in some ways you were meant to experience that so you can grow and move on and recognize those things in the future so you don't yeah. do it again yeah but they aren't you 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 aren't that experience when you're a kid you weren't that relationship you can move on and be a better and happier person and i hear it all the time i'm i'm lazy uh i can't lose weight i yeah. can't do that i'm unhappy i'm destined to to always have bad relationships you're like yeah. no that's a i'll never earn more than this that's no. just me i'll never I mean, be able to buy a house i'll never be able to i know it's comforting to people because you know it you recognize it and they don't know what anything else feels like so it's a little bit scary to step out of that zone as such and experience what people deep down really want to be what they kind of you think oh that's just for other people I had a client yesterday and he said I can't love myself that mean I'm really big-headed and people will think this and people will think that I was like who are these people who's (laughs) gonna think that you're like yeah just be kind to yourself like it's okay you can be nice to yourself it's oh, really interesting really? Oh. Mm. absolutely fascinating when I started to talk about you know loving myself and really being desperately in love with myself just loving myself so much past me was the first person that I allowed myself to love before I could love future me right so yeah. the, the thought was that I had to look look at the me sat in the car that was crying that didn't know if she was going to ride off into the sunset or a lamp post one or the other and and absolutely adore her and say no look what we did you like I've got you I've absolutely got you here in this present moment and that made me realize that future me 
absolutely adores Naomi and is looking back on her and saying, hey, I absolutely love you. I adore, I adore you. Look what we've done. It allows me to, that's not a big headed love. That's a safety. That is a, that gets rid of all of the need for external validation. That's not a big headed egotistical love. That's like, it's almost like loving a child backwards and forwards, isn't it? And that is one of the things you can do is kind of through meditation, through kind of sound healing, through kind of Reiki is to go back to that version of you as a little girl or as a little boy and go, do you know what? I've got your hand. I'm going to give you yeah. a big hug because we can feel really lonely at all times in our life. And yeah. you kind of think you're the only one going through it. Nobody feels like me. No, <laughs> like I'm not that I'm special, but you can feel really isolated and you don't think other people understand, but you understand you. So you right. can be kind, like you said, to that younger version of you and go, do you know yeah. what? You didn't know any better. You do now. And it's OK. Like we're in yeah. a better place. Yeah, look, we're doing all right now. Look, I've got a show, <laughs> my fake TV show on Facebook. You were OK, past Danny. Don't you worry. Um, alongside the thing that I read this morning was around actually the feelings that you get once you start this releasing process that you know if you have been in a cyclical situation where you know you have repeat behaviors you suffer in a cyclical way with your mental health because often it, that's what happens you get you constantly going through this sort of transients of of pain and healing and pain and healing um we don't really know how to break out of that. We know how to revert back and get yeah. back to a certain point. When we start to do this release work, sometimes we can feel quite a bit of fear in that moment as well because we don't know that anything else is safe. And one of the ways our brains in its infinite wisdom wants to do is wants to keep us ha alive how it's always known to keep ourselves alive so anything different is really scary I remember when with the weekend I remember sharing this with the hive the weekend that we moved into the house I completely sabotaged my whole feeling around it because I was frightened absolutely petrified it was all going to get taken away from me I was like oh god what if I can't afford my mortgage next month what if in six what if I've moved too soon what if the business isn't as stable as what I believe it to be completely yeah. kibosh the whole thing because I was scared I'd released that old life I'd released that old that old me and felt like I was shedding my skin and that was a painful process. And then I was almost naked on the other side of it in this big new house going, Oh, you know, what do I do now? <laughs> and that whole process can be daunting, especially when you've got friends and family around you and you almost Shit feel myself. like I can't change. I can't change. Like that's, that's who they want me to be. Yeah. But in actual fact, the benefit of this is that when you work on yourself, the ripple effect is, ginormous like if you're happier more content and living to your full potential then everybody around you benefits and if people drop away that's not a bad thing they're they're, mm. they're not meant to be in your world they're not meant to be with you to help you move forward mm. um I've been in those places like you I mean I when I grew up I grew up in a council estate it was just nasty just lots of people that just I don't know it just wasn't I just never felt like I fitted in I think I felt like that most of my life never felt that place that I fit in mm -hmm. and if I think about kind of things that I went through and just the thoughts that I had through I had anxiety from a very young age and the doctor said here's some antidepressants do this but I never felt like the right thing I always tried to battle on and tried to kind of do the best I can yeah but those negative thoughts um, really can just tailspin you, tailspin you, and you cover it up with alcohol, you cover it up with drugs, you cover it up with bad relationships, mm -hmm. thinking, I just need to get through the next day. Yeah. Um, but in essence, it doesn't serve you in the long run. You're not living to your full potential, and it can be scary because, like you said, the unknown, kind of living a happier life, like, what does that mean? What's that right. like? It can just be so daunting that people want to stay where they are because if they know what it is. It's comfortable. Then don't rock the boat, boat as such. Yeah, a hundred percent. And one of the mantras that we've sort of developed, even just this year in the hive, is success is safe. Like all the good stuff is that's safe. That's what we want. That's the energy that we want to be tapping into. This the our new version of safety are the great things that we're going to create for ourselves, and not the old things that we know that we can survive. <laughs> we don't yeah. just have to survive things anymore. We can create more. So how does that work start, Jane? That like when, so say you have a client come to you, they're ready to start doing the work. How does that path? How does that journey begin with you? So people can have uh, 
just a 30 minute call with me just to find out whether we connect because that's important I mean Very much. working with somebody that you feel understands you that you can relate to yeah. and it's understanding actually where are you now and where do you want to be mm -hmm. and that gap can seem really huge and people don't know the steps that they want to take and you don't necessarily need to know kind of a to z how to get there that happens over the weeks of working together mm -hmm. um and i work with people just to map out in a perfect world if you could win the lottery or you had a magic wand what would your life look like like dream big what would it be and i've had clients that are like well i want to travel the world and other people are like i'd quite happily have money just to buy pot plants like yeah. everybody's got different kind of versions of what makes them happy which is amazing to see actually um and we work together and just to talk through kind of listening to the way that they talk about themselves is really key some like you said people talk very negatively about themselves oh I can't do that mm -hmm. oh my wife won't like that or my husband won't like that I won't yeah. I, I don't want to upset anybody right like, and you think well actually no you, you try and kind of work through those layers to understand actually what would make you happy what do you want out of life because right. everybody benefits from it i had a lady who um in three weeks completely transformed from the person that spoke to me in the discovery call to our third uh, coaching call she looked different she was happier she was more vibrant mm. all i wouldn't say all her anxiety but her anxiety reduced a lot her house was calmer, her kids were calmer. And she even said her son's eczema had actually reduced massively because the stress in the house right. was less. So right. it, the way that she was, was triggering, not intentionally, she just no. didn't know how to move forward. Right. So in short periods of time, just speaking with and working with somebody can really make a difference to actually thinking the steps that you need to take to put yourself first just little actions it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to yeah. be it could be just getting up and going for a walk every day right and then so often and I'm talking I'm talking from my lived experience as a woman and I know that you know all the way across the gender spectrum we you know we experience this in different ways but particularly um for women um who are forced for the most part into gender roles into you know carer emotional laborer all of these sorts of things um we are often when it comes to looking after ourselves or taking time for ourselves we often consider that as selfish mm -hmm. and the argument i guess is and just in in the you know the example of your client just there that actually i would argue that it's selfish not to look after yourself because you are yeah. then having a direct effect on your whole house, everybody around you, your friendships, your relationships, your kids, your kids' health, your kids' yeah. mental health by not looking after yourself. So if you are out there right now and you're sat at home and going, oh, I can't do these nice things for myself, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit and say, actually, yeah. you're having a, a negative impact on yourself and everybody around you by not doing. Go for the walk. Have the bloody bubble bath. Drink the glass of wine, eat the cake, hide in the toilets and eat a bag of crisps. I've seen a TikTok by Claire Chamberlain, who's watching along today, whose self, an idea of self care. She was, the kids were banging on the door. She was in the bathroom with the door shut with a bag of beef and onion crisps. And she's like, sometimes that's just what self care is. You're not being <laughs> selfish. You're allowing your batteries to be charged so that you can come out and be the mum, parent, the partner, friend, yes. person you want yeah, to be colleague work whoever whatever you do whatever hats you, and we all wear many hats in our lives yeah and investing in yourself is an investment in everybody around you so yeah it's not selfish at all completely opposite actually How, as somebody who works in this field what have you noticed over the past 12 to 13 months being in the lockdown situation and do you have any fears about the coming out of the other side of it what do you think maybe the backlash is going to be from from the last 13 14 months there's a reason why be, i'm asking yeah i think the people it's quite daunting myself i don't really want to go back to the hecticness of play dates and birthday parties and meeting up to do this that and the other i quite like my house i quite like <laughs> being home it's nice to be able to go like we went to a theme park on friday with the kids that's nice to do things like that but yeah, I don't want to get back to the busyness. So I think mm -hmm. people will be feeling a little bit anxious and maybe thinking or expecting themselves to go, go back to full pelt 
busy mm. full-on life but I think yeah. for you and I think for lots of people this time out has made us reflect actually what is important actually I feel a lot better that I'm not doing all those busy things right why was I doing them in the first place do I need to do them yeah actually let's free up some time and do the things I want to do rather than right. pleasing all the people around me so right. yeah I think lots of people will be feeling anxious there's going to be lots of people that will be thinking they want to be raring to go back into the world but in actual fact when it comes to it it'll be like oh it's not quite the same anymore it's a bit strange I'll go back so if people are feeling a little bit of trepidation right now and, and anxiety and and fear around what is just around the corner you know the 17th of May and, and another layer of lockdown will be lifted and then on the 21st of June essentially what we're talking about is is things going back to normal in inverted commas whatever normal is aside from sort of widespread worldwide travel what would your top tips be for anybody who's feeling that anxiety right now so I'd make a plan so as simple as it is think about actually what are the things that you want to do or what you want to achieve the people you want to see the places you want to go and don't overwhelm yourself by booking every free slot in make sure yeah. that you take time out to spend with your family to sit around the dinner table and talk and mm -hmm. to cook a meal together to go for a walk do the things that you were still doing in lockdown carry that over to the new normal yeah um, and yeah don't put too much pressure on yourself to to do everything I think that yeah. would really help I think just because the lid's been being lifted off doesn't mean to necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to throw yourself into in inverted commas normal life whatever normal is for anybody you don't have to throw yourself in there you can like take all the best bits of the last yeah. 13 14 months and ease yourself in that way you know lots of my friends now are saying hey let's do things let's do things I'm like I'm still really busy I'm still like I'm still doing things I can't maybe necessarily get back out into the world as I maybe would like to from a social point of view directly not because of fear but just because of what I'm building around me um but you can already see people are either throwing themselves in they're like yes let's just get back out there let's get to normal and then other people are feeling that little bit of like oh, well quite like it <laughs> quite like it here, thank you I don't want to go anywhere else and that's um, fine I think we have all kind of built communities like you've built community i've built community yeah. and i think if you've got still got some sort of connection people that you can still talk to do whatever makes you happy go yeah. out if you want to go out or stay home and if you want to it's absolutely fine what you want what you really want is the most important thing so think about that absolutely so sarah jane what have you got coming up like how, what does the next bit look like for you oh so much so much so oh, i love it tell us <laughs> i'm building my business i still work full time so I, I would love to kind of at some point this year put that to bed and so. a bit like you it's kind of like oh i don't know will i still be able to pay the mortgage will still things kind of work out um so that's it's interesting what happens when you put your back against the wall i know kind of that paycheck is really comfortable and yeah. i've been doing a lot around it so for me it would be to have more free time so i can do yoga and exercise for myself rather than help people yeah. all the time um i have a talk show with four other coaches called the powerful women's hour um yep and we collaborate on that and that's once a week and we talk about all sorts of issues and again that's uh, an adventure that happened during lockdown and just came out of everything again that need to connect the need to have just real people out there talking about real issues like you said sat in the in the bar toilet kind of having a chat with your best mate type thing um but yes we've got uh, retreats i've got a course to launch about how to transform your life so i've gone from kind of a very unhappy place unhappy marriage not knowing what i want to do with my life to kind of the complete opposite living the life i want to live got freedom got money got happy children i'm helping people um so yeah just want to be able to help as many women as possible yeah. to live to their full potential whether that's to run their own business or just to feel happier in themselves day to day 
I love it. I love it. And I think that many of us in the service industry do this, that we've experienced a degree of adversity or discomfort or frustration. Then we've gone and done the learning and the research and the training around that and then develop ways to, you know, we want to say to people like you don't, it doesn't have to be the way that you think it is. You know, our conditioning isn't necessarily how the the way things need to be. And I just think it's, it's beautiful when, you know, again it's one of those one of those cases where you know sleeping women awake and mountains move and it it really is real in this community and i just love it i love you know hearing from women such as yourself who who have been on this journey and do this kind of work it's absolutely fantastic sarah jay could you do me a favor that when we finished on the show today could you pop in the comments a link to the show uh, and how we can get hold of you and if you don't yeah. mind telling everyone who's listening right now how do we hang out with you well you can visit www.sj hyphen lewis.com and on there got some information about how to work with me how to connect with me and i've got a free link to have a hundred energy boosting recipes to reduce stress and anxiety so nice. very simple thing you can start straight away what you put in your body can make a big difference and it doesn't have to be anything fancy just good old-fashioned wholesome foods there's a whole hub of recipes for you to uh, access and start there I love it. I love it. And it's definitely, I think, what lots of us need right now, um, especially as, as as we're trying to move into what 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 is this next bit? What does that look like? And getting all the right things in place, such as your nutrition, such as all of that sort of stuff. And it's not a case of, you know, eating to lose weight or dieting no, or anything no, like no. that. It is eating to make your body and your heart and your mind happy. And I think that is the way that we should look at nutrition. I think it's beautiful. Um, Sarah Jane, you're on the challenge at the moment, aren't you? I am. I'm loving it. I said to you, I'm just closing my eyes and just doing whatever <laughs> you tell me. I've got complete faith in you that it will be the right thing. So I just go, my, my page and my friends are going, what are you up to now? What, what what are you doing? <laughs> Here's a new post. Here's a new video. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's been brilliant, hasn't it? Like in the IATQB hive, it really is popping off. And there's so much going on in there with, with people that are doing what you're doing, that are starting to really allow themselves to be more visible. And we're just all of us are, are out there right now with our top tips and our introductions oh, and stuff. It's brilliant. I mean, the women are amazing. And they're just all normal people, like people that you would quite happily chat in the Morrison's queue or the Tesco's yeah. queue or you'd, in the playground. I mean, everybody is amazing and lovely and so supportive. So if you're not doing the yeah. challenge, then definitely go and have a look. Go and have a little look in the IATQB hive. Uh, Sarah Jane, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Make sure you pop your link so we can all come and follow you and find out more about you and your lovely self. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. That was Sarah Jane Lewis. Everybody, please do go and check her out. She's glorious. Uh, she's also over in the IATQB hive as part of the challenge uh, she's participating and has already given some great value in there. And I know that isn't going to stop today because I know what the tasks are today. So if you want to find out even more about Sarah Jane Lewis and the work that she does, you can go and find out on her socials and get on into the hive and come and network with us. Come and carry on the conversation. Um, don't forget, tomorrow evening, 8 p.m., I am holding the world premiere of the new IATQB promo. I am so excited to share it with you. And I'm also going to be talking to you about charisma. That's tomorrow's late night. Uh, it's the After Hours with Danny Wallace at 8 p.m. for our celebration live, where we are celebrating another incredible end to an incredible week here in the Hive. Uh, I hope you have a phenomenal Thursday. Uh, please do come and jo join us over at Harpers 10 for today's training. If you are wanting to build an audience, if you are wanting to create community, if you are wanting to share your business and your mission message in a more succinct and clear way, even if you've not participated in the challenge so far, you will definitely find the training that I'm doing at Harper's 10 in the Hive very, very, very helpful. All right. So if you do want that help, I have got your back. Head on into the hive, the IATQB hive. Just search IATQB hive. Stands for I am the queen bee. So are you, or the king bee, or the sovereign bee. However you choose, but I love you. And I'll see you tomorrow at 9.30 for more showing up, rising up, and rising up.